Good morning. We are dealing with dams in irrigation systems to inbound water, store water, then release water when demand for water occurs or and the rainfall exceeds and the, the capacity of the reservoir is exceeded. At that time, dam facilitates by opening the shutters to come, enable the water to come to the downstream to the river. According to the material we have classified the dams, then according to the function of the dam, according to the function of the dam, function in the sense, the structural action, structural action of the dam. When we go to the uh, building part, we hope by God's grace we can discuss the structural aspects in detail. Now, just for the understanding, a dam will be subjected to external forces. So these external forces have to be taken care of have to be resisted by the dam. If a dam resists all these external forces, we list what are the external forces, when these external forces are exclusively resisted by the weight of the dam itself, by the weight of the dam itself, because of the dead weight of the dam. If it resists these external forces, then that type of dam is called a gravity dam. So gravity dam is that dam which resists all external forces by which it will be safe, stable and in equilibrium. Safe, stable and in equilibrium. by its own weight, then that type of dam is called the gravity dam. So obviously the gravity dam will be thicker at the top, more thicker at the bottom to resist this force. Another type of dam is called the arch dam. Arch, just like you see the background, it's an arch. See an arch, the books are arranged as an arch. So if you arrange the arch, upstream side will be convex. That means the water facing side of the dam will be convex so that the center of curvature will be in the downstream side. So it will be convex in this shape, in plan. So actually, the, the place I am sitting is the reservoir part. On the other side of the book is the river part. Only thing that I have to face the books to act as the water pressure. So this is a pool of water which will be experiencing a pressure on the dam. So the first external force, foremost external force acting horizontally on the dam. How much force is acting on it? In this video, we'll be going over how to find the hydrostatic force acting on a dam. In this problem, we have a rectangular dam with a water height of 3 meters and width of the water of 50 meters. We want to find the force that is acting on the dam. The first step of this problem is to find the height of the equivalent average pressure on the dam. For a rectangular dam, the average pressure happens halfway between the highest and lowest water level. 
Hydrostatic pressure can be found by taking the density of the water times gravity times the height of the water. Being that we want to find the pressure halfway down, we are using the height of 1.5 meters. After we plug in all of our numbers into the formula, we get an answer of 14,715 newtons meters squared, average pressure on the dam. For your reference, I have placed a graphic of the hydrostatic pressure as we go deeper. Notice that it is a linear function. I have also placed a video that demonstrates how the pressure increases as we go deeper. In this example, I have a bottle with three holes at varying depths. You can see as the holes get deeper, the velocity of the water is greater, so there is a greater pressure as we go deeper. The second step of this problem is to find the area of the dam that is underwater. In this case, we can take the height of 3 meters times the width of 50 meters to get the area of 150 meters squared. The final step of this problem is to take the average pressure times the area underwater to get the force acting on the dam from the hydrostatic pressure. In this example, we have 2,207,250 newtons of force on this dam. This is equivalent to 496,209 pounds for those of you who think in imperial. This is called the hydrostatic pressure, water pressure. Whenever the height of the water or the level of the water is increasing, this hydrostatic pressure will increase. So you will be designing the dam for the maximum water level of the full reservoir level because that is the maximum. So one external force is called the hydrostatic pressure. This water at the surface will have waves whenever there is high velocity of wind and when water comes and hits the dam, there will be wave and there will be rising up of water which is known as the backwater curve. It will rise up whenever there is an obstruction. It is a backwater curve. So that water will be having a wave and that wave will result in hydrodynamic pressure. Since the waves are active and dynamic, another external force acting on the dam, one is the hydrostatic pressure, next is the hydrodynamic pressure, hydrostatic and hydrodynamic. There are equations for all these things. Hydrostatic pressure is a, a linearly varying hydrodynamic pressure is uh, the second degree term, non-linearly varying. Then the earthquake force dam is prone to earthquake, a site which is not having any earthquake threat there is a chance of that place getting an epigate threat provided a huge dam is constructed there. Because that huge dam will have very hectic mass, very heavy mass. Because it has to resist the external forces. So that much heavy dam having tons, thousands of tons of weight, when septic wave acts, F is equal to m into a, mass into acceleration. So the epic force will be very high because the mass is very high according to the epic acceleration. So this effect of epic is another external force acting on the dam. And it will have two effects, one in the horizontal direction another in the vertical direction. Epicate. So the horizontal direction, the horizontal direction, sometimes the horizontal acceleration may be favorable for the dam, if the direction of the epicate in one direction. If the epicate acceleration is in another direction, it will be unfavorable for the dam. As I have told you, always design will be pessimistic, so since the design is pessimistic, always we will take the effect of the horizontal acceleration which will affect, which will be achieved in the direction which will act as an external force which also has to be resisted by the dam. So epicake force, hydrostatic force, hydrodynamic force.
then sometimes there may be cold regions where the surface water will become ice because of reduction in the temperature there will be freezing on the surface then you will be having an external process the ice pressure the water pressure and ice pressure are not the same so the another is the ice pressure then you have when you have a dam and you have a foundation for the dam because any structure should have a foundation so huge amount of water is accumulate accumulated at one side and there is soil below the soil below through which water can percolate into penetrate into that process of penetrating into the soil is called percolation according to the permeability of the soil then whatever water which has penetrated into percolated into you try to come to the downstream below the foundation of the dam so dam body of the dam foundation of the dam foundation is on a hard stratum but there is there will be soils and joints pores by which the water will try to creep that process is known as creeping so water will percolate then creep horizontally and reach the downstream during the process of creeping the water will experience an uplift pressure on the dam but water it, it, that uplift pressure will not be very small because you have meters meters of water accumulated on the downstream um, upstream upstream side of the dam accumulated at the upstream side of the dam that much head of water this head of the whenever the head of the water is more the effect of gravity will be more so water will come with a great pressure to the downstream underneath the foundation that will experience a pressure on the foundation then to the body of the dam in the upward direction so suppose you take this the hydrostatic pressure the hydrodynamic pressure the ice pressure all are acting at the upstream base of the dam earth care force and then the uplift pressure acting upwards then there will be this is an advantage then there will be some water as i have told you the stilling basin stilling basin so whatever water there and some water will get and uh, collected at the downstream side of the dam so this downstream side of the dam whatever water collected is known as tail raised water t a i l tail r a s e tail raised water upstream water tail raised water this tail raised water is also having a weight and that weight is advantageous for the stability of the dam whatever water getting accumulated on the downstream will only help the dam to take care of the external forces so that is a safer design so you usually and the uplift whenever you have an upward force and if you have a downward force according to newton's third law then the effective A reaction will be less. So you have. So the worst condition is there is no tail water raise. There is no tail water. You will not consider the tail water, so that you will get the worst condition of descent. Then the wave pressure I told you. When the dam. takes care of all these external forces without failure exclusively due to the weight of the dam then it is called a gravity dam these are the forces acting on any dam first we are telling how a gravity dam resists these forces 
So to start with, to initialize the design of a gravity dam, you will assume only three forces at a time, only three forces initially. That is the hydrostatic pressure, which is a triangular variation, which you have zero pressure at the top and maximum pressure at the base of the dam, a triangle, a right angle triangle, which the, you know the centroid of the right angle triangle. So you can locate exactly the center of gravity of the hydrostatic pressure on the body of the vertical face of the dam. Usually the upstream side of any dam will be vertical to a great height. Only to increase the base width, sometimes near the base it will be tapering. So usually the vertical face of a dam will be a vertical line, then a tapering line joining the base. So one hydrostatic pressure in the horizontal direction. Similarly, uplift pressure is also hydrostatic. Only thing that it is in the vertical direction. Hydrostatic pressure is in the horizontal direction. Uplift pressure is in the vertical direction. That is also a triangular variation because you are assuming the tidewater zero. Again, you will have a right angle triangle lying down. Right? So it will have a center of gravity and you point. So two forces are one extra uh, hydrostatic force, a triangular variation, an uplift force, a triangular variation. Then according to the weight of the dam, each weight will have a center of gravity. So you can calculate the total weight by knowing the specific density, specific weight or unit weight of the dam material, you can calculate the total weight of the dam considering a meter length of the dam. So you get the weight that will act at the centroid of the central gravity of the dam. So three poses, one is a horizontal hydrostatic pressure or force, another is the uplift to force and third is the weight of the dam. This weight of the dam has to resist the hydrostatic pressure because the hydrostatic pressure will try to overturn the dam. So if you have the dam like this, this is the toe of the dam and this upstream bottom of the dam is called the key and the downstream bottom is called the toe. So this hydrostatic force will try to overturn the dam in the clockwise direction. And the weight of the dam will try to counteract that in the anti-clockwise direction. The uplift pressure also will try to overturn above this point. These two are clockwise. This force into this distance is clockwise. This force into this distance is clockwise. Whereas this force into this distance is anti-clockwise. So this anti-clockwise moment has to be equal to this clockwise, sum of the clockwise moments. If you consider only these three forces and check the stability of the dam, then that dam is called the elementary profile of the dam. Usually the elementary profile of the dam will be a vertical right angle triangle. We will continue tomorrow. Thank you. God bless.